Uh, I'm Jean-Paul Cano from the University, Central University of Venezuela. I did my PhD with Dr. Scott D. in the University of Minnesota. And this is part of the work that I want to show you guys today. So basically what we tried to do was uh, a study if the vaccine, the modified live vaccine, the commercially available vaccine, was uh, useful for communication purposes or for control purposes uh, as an area-based uh, focus. We all know that Puris virus is a very tough disease, very costly disease, and a uh, study in 2005 coming from a national court board uh, claims that 560 million per year that we are losing as an industry, at least just in cost and uh, reducing productivity in those farms. That, out of that cost, 88% of that cost is only in when to finish pigs. So we have to find a way to reduce that impact of the disease in those pigs. So the objective today for every pig producer or veterinarian working out there is to produce PCR negative piglets and send them to the uh, wind to, to finish or run units so you can get as much as you can from those pigs. At this point where we are maybe not, not in the best time or best moment in the industry, we have to still rethink or think again on the, on the value of health and more than produce a less costly pig or produce in a most, uh, the most efficient way that you can produce, then you have to think on as a producer or as a veterinarian, uh, what's the perception of the society about our industry? If we are producing with some tough conditions, as if we have poor virus, for example, in our farms, then uh, we are giving an excuse to the, to the society to think that we are being bad with pigs. There is people out there that think that we are doing really bad things to the animals and, and we are producing meat in very bad conditions. So I think this is one of the things that we can work on to show the society that we work with healthy pigs and really happy pigs so we can produce a meat of real good value. So we started this idea saying that if you do a mass vaccination, repeat mass vaccination on an infected population, you could be able to reduce the time of shedding, the, the excretion of the disease, the time of persistence, the virus in the tissues, and the impact of a potential reinfection of that population. So th this is a quite different approach of what we usually do with vaccines. So you expect to vaccine a pop to vaccinate a population, which is maybe negative, and then you expect the vaccine to prevent clinical signs of the disease from a potential infection. But in this case, we wanted to vaccinate, mass vaccinate an infected population to see if that could reduce the impact of the disease. So our objective basically at the end was to determine if vaccination is an important component on PERS control and eradication programs with three specific goals. One was to determine if vaccination affect the persistence or the time that virus is still in the tissue of the pig. Second, to evaluate if vaccination could affect the time of transmission. And third, to evaluate the clinical signs of vaccinated animals against a potential uh, challenge. So we basically did this study in two years. The first year we used a homologous virus, so the same virus that we infected our population was the same exact as a strain where the vaccine was made of. So this is a homologous challenge that we use there. And then the second year, we want to do something more applyable, applyable to the reality in the field. So we use a different virus to infect our population and then vaccinate with a completely different virus. Let me then explain what we did in that second study, which is more uh, applic applicable to the reality in the field. We had 484 pigs, naive, purse naive pigs. We used the commercially available bearing in your hand purse virus MOV vaccine. We infected our pigs with Minnesota 3100, which is a strain, is a very mild strain. It doesn't produce very critical disease, just maybe a couple of days with fever, off feed, and then they get better and, and, and do fine. So, but this strain has a a specific characteristic that it lasts for a long time in the pig, so it can be shed for a long time, 
and that was what we wanted to check. And then for the second challenge, we used a 184. You might have heard about this strain, it's very severe, so the disease that is produced in the pig is very tough, so you, you can have 10 to 20 percent of mortality and severe pneumonia in those pigs. As diagnostic tools, we use PCR to detect the RNA of the virus, and we use ELISA for antibodies. So this is quite complicated, but I will be, I will try to explain it shortly and very easy. We had a challenge group where we just infected the pigs. That was our positive control. So those pig, pigs only received Minnesota 3100, only that virus. We had 80 pigs per group. When then the second, third, and fourth group were our treatments. So the first group was infected with Minnesota 3100, and seven days later they came and mass vaccinated with the MLB vaccine. The group C, the same thing, but we put two doses on those animals, so at seven and 37 days after the original infection. And then group D, we infected the animals and then put three doses on those animals. So we wanted to check here if we had any difference between vaccinating just one time or three times that population of pigs. Our negative control, so didn't get peers in, during the study. And we had a group for the challenge that I will explain in a minute that only received the vaccine virus. So it was not challenged with this 3100, just the vaccine to see what would happen with, that, with those pigs. So the first objective was to detect, to determine for how long or what was the effect of the vaccine on the persistence of the virus in the tissues. So we, what we did was every 30 days after the first vaccination, we sacrificed, we slaughtered 10 pigs per group and checking the tissues by PCR if they still har were harboring the virus. To assess transmission, what we did, we had uh, five different barns or five different big rooms in, a, in some barns, and then we put some sentinels in, period, in a period of time of 30 days. So after the first vaccination, we wait 30 days, and then we put 10 animals, 10 naive animals from a naive farm in those uh, infected populations to see if they got infected from the original population. We did that here, removed those pigs, slaughtered them, checked the tissues and the blood, and we put another group, sorry, another group of pigs 30 days later, so we, we can check this period here, and then the third group of sentinels were, were introduced between 97 and 127 days after the original inoculation. So we had three different groups of, of sentinels just for 30 days in that population to check if they could get infected from the originally infected population. And the third objective was to check what would happen if this population that was infected and maybe vaccinated later would get another infection with a different, totally different virus. So at 90 days, 97 days after our 3100 first inoculation, we took pig, 10 pigs per group and moved them to the University of Minnesota isolation facilities, put them five in each group. This is a, a high biosecurity unit where we could be sure that we wouldn't have any contamination across rooms. And we infected them, inoculated them with this virus 184, which is very severe, and checked clinical signs, serum, and uh, tissues, uh, virus in the tissues during 21 days or 24 days. We wanted to know if those animals that were reinfected or re-exposed to other virus would be able to transmit that virus to another negative animal because it's a situation that could happen in the field. What about if I have a herd that is infected, then I mass vaccinated, but I get a new virus next year. Will those negative animals that I, that I put in my farm will get infected with this new virus? So we put a sentinel per room, so one sentinel and five originally infected pigs per room for 21 days in those, in those groups. And this is what we, find, we, we found. Mass vaccination did not have a significant effect on the proportion of persistently infected pigs. What, what happened here was that the vaccination could not reduce the proportion of animals that were harboring virus at the end of the period, not even in, in each of those periods. So vaccination didn't have anything to do with reducing the virus in the tissues of the pigs. And it, it didn't reduce the amount of virus that was still in those tissues, 
and this is important, so we couldn't have an effect of reducing the amount of the virus in the tissue. And the virus that we were finding here was still 3100. What, what it means is that the vaccine virus could not move or displace the original virus that we put in the pig. And uh, for Augeskis disease or for classical swine fever, you can mass vaccinate a population and, and after some time, the vaccine virus will displace or take out the, the field virus. In this case, our, under our conditions, we couldn't see that. Transmission is quite different. You remember we had three different periods where we put 10 animals per group, so 10 naive animals, to see if that population was still shedding the virus. Well, the first two periods, all the groups shed the virus and the sentinels got infected. The interesting thing occurred in the last period, 97 to 127 days after the original infection with 3100, we observed that only the group that was not vaccinated only received the, the field virus inoculation at the beginning infected the sentinel animals. All the three groups that received one or two, either three doses of the vaccine, did not transmit the virus. So the virus was not shed to the sentinel pigs that were included in those groups. And this is quite interesting for us because we showed that mass vaccinating a group of animals, you can reduce the time or the duration of the shedding in a population, and that's very useful for acclimation yields or for uh, some uh, sow herds that you want to close and then reopen. In our challenge, or with 184, what we observed was that all the groups, this is the number of positive animals that were uh, having virus in the serum, so viremic pigs, and days after 184 inoculation, and all the groups, all of them, showed sometime at least one animal with viremia. So the vaccination, even if they were exposed to a, a virus, a field virus, and then three doses of vaccine, if you put one more virus there, you still will have viremia. And this is something under, important to understand. It doesn't matter if the population has been exposed and re-exposed or vaccinated. If you get another virus, those animals will have a viremia. And it can be very short, but you, they will have viremia. And one other, the other thing that we found, oh, let me go back, is that those animals were shedding that virus and could infect the sentinels. So we didn't see any difference between the animals that were infected or vaccinated just one time or the animals that received over, uh, even four doses of, of the virus. This is a clinical science, don't worry about the BC chart, I just want to show you that the only group where we actually saw any uh, clinical science or reduction in, in production was the, the first time inoculated group. So those pigs in group E just received the one in four challenge. And what we saw was some fever, one pig died 12 days after the infection, and severe reduction in, in feed consumption. So, and the average daily gain was significantly lower than the rest of the groups. But the rest of the groups, so only one infection here, or one infection plus one vaccination, or even one infection plus three vaccinations, on only just one vaccination, all of them respond very similar to the challenge with the new virus. So what we want to say here is that exposure to pink first virus will improve the clinical response to a second challenge, a potential second challenge on the animals. It didn't reduce the amount of virus in the tissues. This time the virus that we recovered from those pigs in the slaughterhouse was 184. So in this case, this severe virus or highly replicating virus uh, displays the vaccine and the old field virus that we have there. All the sentinels in every group became infected by the end of exposure time. So if you have a population and you have a re-exposure or reinfection in that population, they will shed the virus for a period of time. Maybe that's shorter than the first time, but you still will have some transmission in those areas. And that can explain some things that we have seen in the, in the field. So in conclusion, the vaccine, under the conditions of our study, the mass vaccination, did not have a significant effect on the proportion of first virus persistently infected pigs or the viral load on those animals. But, oh, it was 
not able to eliminate the wild type virus, but it reduced the duration of shedding, which is quite important for us, and significantly improved clinical response following heterologous challenge, but it didn't prevent the shedding uh, to the sentinels. Some of the limitations of our study were the population size, the selection of isolates, we could have done different isolates, or the duration of the studies. Maybe if we would leave those animals for a longer period of time, then we could have seen other differences uh, more evident. Future studies maybe to test the first virus therapeutic vaccination in herds with different challenges, and uh, try to test it, this in area-based uh, first control and eradication program, so vaccinate a group of farms and see what, what happened there, or evaluate that in the presence of other agents as mycoplasma or circovirus. So we started to think when we got all the results, what could we do, what we could do with the results in, in our hands, and trying to apply that to real situations in the field. So one of them that we always think on is sow hair mass exposure. Let's say that you have a hair that is infected and you want to close the hair and you need to expose all the animals in that hair. You don't want to use your virus because it's a very virulent virus and you have a susceptible population there. You, only, you always have the option to go with mass vaccination. And some people would say, well, that doesn't work. We have tried that. If you respect the times of closure, the partial populations, the flow of the animal, you will give this population a good chance to respond as well as if it were exposed to a field virus. So in this case, I say that if we do everything as we always do with mass exposure, vaccination could help if that's not an option for you because the virulence of the virus. If you have the same case, a GDU in the farm and you, you got the stability of your farm and you don't want to be playing with field virus there so it can escape and you can use vaccine and keep your hair stable. In finishing groups, both cases, if you have a negative group that is going to a very dense area, hot area, you can vaccinate the, finish, the finishing animals and reduce the clinical uh, problems that you will have in those groups. Or the other case, if you have one of your finishings that is very close to a naive hair, a sow hair, you can decide to vaccinate that hair, that finishing barns, to reduce the shedding of the virus to your, to your sow hair. Or if you talk to a neighbor and you have an, an agreement and reduces that shedding from the finishing, that could be beneficial. And new populations in high dense areas with high risk could be an option to mass vaccinate the population. Just to finish, let me show you the dynamics of first virus when the, the pig sees the virus the first time. So for about 10, 14 days, you can find antibodies in the blood of the pig. The viremia could last, or the time that the virus is in the, in the blood, it lasts about 14 to 35 days. Then you have clinical signs, depending on the strain that you have in your farm, you can have high mortality or not. There is a period, a very important period, which is called the transmission or infectious period. And please note that the viremia period could be just one month, but then you have some more days where the animal is PCR negative and it can be shed in the virus. And that's important because some people is just checking that lab results and see this is PCR negative, let's put it in the farm. And they are still in this period where they can be shed in the virus. And then there is another period which is in my opinion, it's not that important when you can have the virus in the tissues, but for some reason that virus is not shed or is created to naive animals. So it is not able to infect naive animals. So in my opinion, the important things are viremia and transmission time. And this is why when we do an acclimation process, we, we try or we target to keep the sows or the gills in that unit at least 100 days after the inoculation. So you are behind this line, so you reduce the probability of shedding the virus in your herd. When we expose, what we learn from these two studies is that when you expose your animals, your pigs, to a virus, could be a field virus or a vaccine virus, you short all those periods. You make them shorter. So the viremia could be even one day or very short. The antibodies are detectable at seven days. So as I said, viremia could be zero to 14 days. The transmission period becomes 14 to 30 days maybe, and that's a variable between strains. And then the, the persistence hasn't been 
studied uh, deeply, but it's logic to think that it could be reduced to. So thinking on this, which what we found, this is only in one animal. So what could happen in a population? If you have a population with an endemic infection, then you will have that one animal is able to infect the next one and that one will infect the other. So you make a circle of infection in that population and you don't cut that cycle because you are continuously putting no pigs there. So if you mass expose that population, what you will do is that you will short those periods of excretion or shedding and then you and then you will get to the point that uh, the last infectious animals, animal won't be able to infect the first naive or susceptible animal in your herd. And that's the point where you want to be. And that's maybe one of the toughest or hardest to decide uh, where are you in that farm in that specific moment. This is when you need to decide if you are putting negative yields in, if you are uh, changing the they are the source of your of your wind pigs. If you're moving them to other facilities that could be negative. So this is a very important time and you have to do a lot of diagnosis to de determine if you are in that point. But the idea is that if you expose your hair and you stabil uh, get to the stability of your sow hair, then you'll get to that point where the last animal won't be able to infect the, the naive or susceptible animals. So this is in a herd, and what I wanted to show the next slide, maybe was the last one, that's fine. I'm, I think I'm done, that's fine. The next one was a, just a map, Google map, showing a group of farms, very close farms, and the first thing that I wanted to show is that when you have a, an infection in one of those herds, a naive herd, let's say it's a 4,000 finishing farm, and it's naive, and then it got infected when they were, I don't know, 150 pounds, there are 4,000 4, animals shedding a lot of virus. So the farm, maybe one mile away, can get a lot of virus from those 4,000 animals that got infected. So what we are proposing is, if you can mass vaccinate the whole area, you will reduce the intensity of that shedding, you will reduce the duration of that shedding. So the probability that that first farm that got infected in an area could infect the next farm close to it will be reduced. So that's the way that we think that you can that we can use vaccines for eradication purposes. So this is not a perfect tool, but this is a very good tool for our purposes if we combine that with herd closure, uh, animal flow, and a strict biosecurity. I think that already, and that was my last slide. Uh, as an industry, we have to come together, as we have been uh, saying that for a few years now. But this is a good moment to be optimistic as. Dr. D was saying this morning in the meeting that we had, and get together and work on first eradication and area base. Now we have the knowledge and the technology to go after that. I think that we have the ability to, to become a successful industry after first eradication. Thank you.